uh, companies that make arm derived custom cores now uh, include qualcomm and apple so for the apple bionic soc you've got like uh, custom cores like uh, firestorm ice storm uh, vortex twister monsoon and stuff they're all uh, arm derived or made from arm designs custom cores so <laughs> hi welcome to another video so in today's video we're going to be talking about ip cores versus custom cores now before i get into all that i will need to talk about what an soc is first i've already talked about it in previous videos but i'm assuming some of us could be watching for the first time and may not have seen the previous videos i'm going to leave links to the cards up here which is on my left which is your right as the video moves along so Let's start off with what an SOC is. An SOC basically is the brain of the phone. It's a system on a chip that contains several CPUs that helps your phone carry out its different functions. Now, the most important part of an SOC are what we call CPU cores. CPU cores are very important. They are the main computing hub of every SOC. Now, generally speaking, there are two types of CPU cores. The first ones we call them IP cores from ARM and the second ones are called custom cores. So now an IP core is basically a core that is made using ARM designs, strictly ARM designs, straight from the design sheets. Not a single word was removed, not a single code was changed, not a single transistor out of place. It was made exactly the way ARM designed it to be made. We call those cores IP cores or intellectual property cores, meaning that these cores are the intellectual property design of ARM holdings. All right, now the second set of cores, apart from the IP cores which we've mentioned earlier, are what we call custom cores. Now, custom cores are, are divided into two generally as well. Now, you can have custom cores that are ARM derivatives or you can have non-derivative cores that are not derived from ARM at all. So, custom cores that are derived from ARM are simply uh, like maybe, for example, somebody wants, like somebody like Qualcomm, for example, wants to make a custom core that's their own CPU core and they get designs from ARM and they are not satisfied with what they see. So they can simply modify the design, they can add in stuff, they can remove stuff, they can try and make it run cooler or make it run faster, make it run quieter. But the design is no longer the way ARM designed it. The company making it has made some alterations or moderations or stuff like that to um, the design. So therefore it is now customized to run the way the company that bought those designs wanted to work. So we call those designs that are made, that are customized from ARM derived designs, we call them custom uh, cores. So there's also another set of custom cores. These ones don't really use ARM derived designs. They're just like made uh, from whatever custom designs that um, the manufacturer intended and then used on the SOC. Uh, companies that make ARM derived custom cores now uh, include Qualcomm and Apple. So for the Apple Bionic SOC, you've got like uh, custom cores like uh, Firestorm, Ice Storm, uh, Vortex, Twister, Monsoon and stuff. They're all uh, ARM derived or made from ARM designs custom cores. So you also have a Qualcomm 2 which makes the Snapdragon. They also make um, ARM derived custom cores as well for their Cryo Gold and Cryo Silver uh, CPUs for their uh, Snapdragon SOCs. So non-ARM derived uh, CPU cores are those that are made without any reference to ARM designs. So Samsung used to make their own uh, Mongoose uh, Mongoose, Cheetah, Lion custom cores, which are non ARM derived uh, CPU cores, but they didn't do very well, so they trashed it. Yeah, they, they got rid of the whole, like they closed down the whole custom core division, and they're like, you know what, we give up. We're buying ARM designs now. ARM, you win, you've got the best ones. Uh, uh, before them, I think uh, Qualcomm also had their crates and uh, the early cryo uh, CPU cores, which were totally like customized designs that they made in-house with no reference to using ARM designs but well turns out in the end the ARM designs are the best fit for smartphones all right so this will now raise the question 
uh, with IP calls, they are very easy to know which one is better than which, especially if you are reading uh, SOC specs, because you see ARM Cortex designs usually have ARM Cortex um, a53, A55, A72, A73, A75, A76, A78 and so on and so forth and it's very very easy because of the way the numbers are arranged you can be able to tell which one is more powerful than which but lots of people are having this problem with custom calls because uh, custom calls sometimes don't really uh, f lots of people come and they see names like cryo 465 cryo 470 cryo 480 and like for qualcomm now and then you see uh with the bionic you see ice storm thunderstorm like how do you compare and contrast which ones are better well it's a very simple way to do this now with uh, qualcomm's custom calls it is very very easy to compare which ones to compare them with ip calls now but with apple it is <laughs> dare i say almost impossible to compare this is because apple only gives the information about which um which um generation that the uh cpu core is based on you could tell you could be arm v8.1 a arm v2 a arm v3 a arm v4 a but they never really tell you which cpu design that it's based on qualcomm are much more transparent when it comes to telling uh users now which um arm cpu design that their custom cores are based on for example the cryo 465 gold which is on the snapdragon 720g is based on arm cortex a76 design so when you see a uh, cryo 465 based on arm cortex uh, a76 and then you see uh, a regular ip core arm cortex a76 you can be able to now like compare and contrast and see uh in terms of which ones are better but uh as a general rule as a general rule that you should know as a general rule if you have uh, a custom core and you have an ip core uh, basically a custom call for maybe either Apple or Qualcomm off the top of your head the customized calls are almost usually always better almost always better almost always so if you've got um, an A76 derivative from Qualcomm and you've got an IP A76 odds are that the uh, customized A76 from Qualcomm is for the Snapdragon is going to be better than the ordinary IP core that's just you know, like made like that straight from ARM's designs. Alright so the ability to be able to modify ARM's design for custom to customize it to make a custom core gives uh, custom cores an edge over arms ip designs it doesn't necessarily mean that arms ip designs are bad no of course not they're actually like really 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 very good uh, and you see my, lots of companies are ch have chosen to just go straight and use arms ip calls without even like modifying them or anything of the sort because they actually are really really good uh you see the google tensor for example runs all of its cpu cores with arms ip cores same thing goes for uh, samsung as well for their exynos 2100 exynos 2200 the only customized thing there is the amd uh, gpu that's put there so that's for that uh, so off the bat off the bat if you have a custom core and you have an ip core which are both uh, of the same class odds are that the customized score is going to be almost always better more optimized faster and stuff like that so i think that's the only information i need to pass out that people need to know the differences between the customized scores and the ip cores and that would be that um, my name is jeffrey once more please like and subscribe to the channel uh, like the video subscribe to the channel tell your friends tell your families about it, especially people who are interested in geeky tech stuff or who want to know about phones and which phones to buy it's a diy stuff we're doing here i'll be jeffrey and i'll be signing out